slip the lies one day at a time. Kimmy Kim and Elations Radio. They're here to get your day going fine. Kimmy Kim and Elations Radio. Kimmy Kim and Elations Radio. Kimmy Kim and Elations Radio. And here's your host. Miss Kim Robinson. What's going on, my good people? This is Charles McCutcheon. I'm your favorite entrepreneur. Good, good, good to get back on track and making some power moves out here in this world of ours. Today, well, for those who don't know who I am or what we do here, This is basically a financial piece all put together. It's like making gumbo. You just put it all together, and it comes out to be spectacular. So today I'm going to talk about some things I'm working on. Like I always like to do, talk about things that can help you to get to financial freedom, but I'm talking about things that I'm working on right now so I can get to where I need to be to be, and I need to put my mask on first, just like y'all need to do. You help yourself, and then you can help other people. So, the thing that I put out there today on social media, I put out about a lot of people coming to me about money, and that's always going to be the case and how to grow their businesses, you know, where can they get funding. It's always funding, 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 funding. No matter, it seems like every, everybody I speak to, is it's all about the money. And rightfully so, that my business is way back when. I said, if I had to do it over again, I would focus on the money up front. And I think a lot of us don't do that. Uh, we just try to get out there and run with it and make things happen and hope for the best, you know. A piece of it, even, you know, even if it's the money part, a piece of it, because I do on the real estate side of things, I call it private money or having people that want to invest with you or in you. And a big piece of that is your branding. And I think having, this is just what happened in my world, uh, being Having things like branding yourself, branding your name, branding your image goes along with people investing in you, which they can invest their time, they can invest their money or what have you. Resources, that's always a good thing, time, money, resources. So when I say you're branding, oh, I even put up an assessment for people so you can take the the assessment and it will kind of give you uh, what you need to be doing to get yourself out there Branding is more like marketing. You can have bad marketing as well. And, they, you know, some people say there's no such thing as bad marketing, but to me there is. If you, uh, I had a lady that wanted me to, she wanted to use my likeness, my picture, and to do something. But she didn't tell me what that something was going to be. And I said, ma'am, I'm sorry. I've built my brand for all these years, and you want to take it. She said it was going to be a surprise. I'm not a surprise guy. You can lose your credibility in what, less than five minutes? You literally can lose your credibility in five minutes. So I say you can't take my brand and do something that I don't know what's going to be, you know, what is going to come of it because I, I it took me too many years to do this, and I just don't want to be associated with everything, and you shouldn't either. So, yeah, I would tell you like this. If you're on social media and you're not making money, uh, I would say you're – Mm, you're wasting time, for one, because you're just on there to be on there, you know, to be entertained, because we love to be entertained. My thing is if people don't resonate with you when your name comes up or your picture, and, like, I literally get stopped in in Walmarts and Targets and different places at meetings. You're like, hey, you are uh, you, Mr. Real Estate, right? So they know, because I brand myself as real estate, real estate, real estate, real estate. Everywhere I go, you know, we in these rooms, I was just in Atlanta, standing up there, she was, you know, introduce yourself. I just tell people, my name is Charles McCutcheon. I'm Mr. Real Estate. I let people know I'm hungry. You know, everything about the real estate arena is, is kind of like where I want to be involved with, and I let them know why I'm there and things of that nature. So you have to create your brand. And the sad part is I see people right now that, you know, in the real estate world, they're asking people for money, but I look at their social media, and I can't tell if, if they want to go hiking if they just like throwing goofy stuff out, I can't tell they do real estate. I can't tell what they do. You know, I, what you have to do, you branding yourself as the expert in that 
arena. So if you want to go for the money or people, if private money, people to invest in you or with you, people should be able to look at you and be like, wow, no, no, this person is that person in this arena. No, that's the insurance lady. That's the real estate guy. That's the estate guy. That's the who accountant. You, that's the tax lady right there. No, she, she's good with what she does. So in that respect, y'all, to brand yourself. And uh, I'll give y'all, I'm going I'm to put it out there right now. Might as well. And it's free, no big deal. If you go to hiddengemconsulting.com, H-I-D-D-E-N-G-E-M-C-O-N-Consulting, S-U-L-T-I-N-G, hiddengemconsulting.com, you can go to, it's called Branding and, and Private Money, and it'll be an assessment you can take so you can figure out where you are. And then I put some stuff up there about private money as well. I only put what I do and what I'm doing and what I've done. So you have to look at, you know, you can look at it and you can fill your own stuff in to say, okay, if I do insurance, I don't care which business you do, you're going to have to brand yourself if you want to stand out. And if you don't want to stand out, keep doing what you're doing. This is probably not for you. It's only for those people who want to just go ahead and crush 2020. That's my take. The goal is to crush 2020, not to just be out here just, you know, we already in the third month, (laughs) y'all. We're in the third month. I see a lot of people have already quit. It is what it is. And some people still going. That's good, but those that quit, they're going to come back around November, December, and they're going to they're gonna give you this cliche. They're going to say, I'm really ready now. <laughs> I get that so much. And it's, it's kind of, you know, it's like it's played out. I get that from so many people. Out of 100 people, I say one and a half. That's kind of crazy to say, but like one, one maybe two people, are are really doing what they say they're gonna do. I get so many people that say, "Yeah, I'm starting, man. I'm a, I want to do, I want to do." And then I reach back out to these same people, and six months have gone by, eight months have gone by, a year has gone by, and they're still doing the exact same thing. And you know what I do? I keep it moving, because it's all for me about consistency. Most of us are not consistent enough to go get what God already laid out there for us. So it's already laid out there for us. Y'all better believe that. People say they're waiting on God, but he's already laid everything out there. You just haven't gotten up to connect with the right people to do the right thing to go get it. You haven't taken action. You haven't taken massive action. And I, I know this is in your face. It is what it is. If you don't like it, this is probably not for you. I'm just being honest. I can't sugarcoat this stuff because everything we need, we already have inside of us. We have to go get it. We really have to go get it. I just saw an article today about this young lady. She actually flew in to Atlanta, and she put up a billboard, and she and the billboard was saying, attention, Mr. Perry, and then it had her name, and it said, Miss, Miss Bailey is your next leading lady. And she put her, her email address up there and her, and her uh, Instagram up there, and now she's actually getting chosen to be on one of his uh, – one of Tyler Perry's sitcom shows called Sisters. She took a leap of faith and just said, I'm going in. And I love that about people, man. We just got to get up and do it. I'm sitting there going all these doggone events. I'm going to give you all what I did just because, you know, and this is part of my, uh, what I do for private money. I, I, I'm just going to tell people it is what it is. And I'm going to see if I can, uh, if I can remember like, like everything. <laughs> Everything I've been doing since the last, I would say, probably two weeks, probably two weeks. And it's just, I've been traveling. They say it's never a problem, a money problem, just to let y'all know, because money is like, we always thinking about it. We're always trying to get it. It's never a money problem. It's a mental problem. It's a mental problem. I say personally, Whoever is out there in front of people, that's who gets chosen. The best marketer, and if you don't know how to market, you need to take some time out and study, or you need to pay somebody. Those are the only two options we have, family. It's just like doing your credit. They're like, what am I going to do? Either you're going to figure it out yourself, or you're going to pay somebody. Those are the only two things we're going to do. Branding doesn't come overnight. You have It takes time. It could take years for you to brand yourself. I remember uh, reading up on Kevin Hart. He said, y'all think 
you know, this what I do is easy. But he said, y'all didn't, y'all didn't see me till seven years in. Seven years in, six or seven years in, we didn't even know Kevin Hart existed. Then in the sixth year, seventh year, he just exploded. But what about all that work you put in? So a lot of people don't understand that. What we're doing along this journey, you're creating experiences. People should be excited to want to speak to you, like get on the phone with you. After I get to an event, before I leave that event, people coming up to me for autographs. People saying, hey, can I, can I get in touch with you? We just need to talk. Because when you stand up in front of people, it should be memorable. People should know that you're in the room. And if, you, if, you, if, they, if they don't know you're in the room, you've got to change up what you're doing. You've got to change up what you're saying. Anybody can get up there, hello, my name is Charles McCutcheon. I do real estate and sit down. You, anybody can do that. You got to do something to stand out. You're, you're, how many real estate folks out there? How many agents? How many realtors? How many investors? How many how many insurance folks? How many people that do accounting? How many tax folks? I mean, tax folks are coming out the woodwork right now. How are you standing out as a as a company as a person? Do they believe in you? Do they trust in you? Do they love you? Because that's when they'll do business with you. That's what it comes down to. So what are you doing to stand out? People meet me, they say, what do you do? I say, I grow money. I guarantee you, anybody I say I grow money to, they're going to they're gonna ask the question of how. <laughs> I guarantee you, it's just it's a natural thing for us to do. I grow money. How? How does that work? And now we have a conversation. So that's what I'm doing. We have a conversation after I say I grow money. That's what we got to do. You have to put yourself out there in, in the best light. So you can get chosen in a sense. You know, that's all we're doing. We're trying to say, okay, well, how can I be chosen? How can I be the, the number one person out there? So this is what I do. And this is just the real estate world. And you can change around the, the type of meetings I go to and do it for you. And, and I guarantee you we're not going to do it. That's just what it is. Because a lot of us are just built differently. A lot of us are hungry, and a lot of us say we're hungry, and we really go after it. And a lot of people just say they're hungry, and then they turn on the TV. So there's a difference from certain people and, and why certain people get to that place to where, wow, I don't believe you made $100,000. I don't need, believe you made, you know, I don't believe you were able to, I don't believe you. And they don't believe it because it's, it's unbelievable in their world because they haven't challenged themselves. You don't know how hard you have to go until you really have, like, nothing left in the tank. I don't know about y'all, but I don't have that springboard to where if I lost it all, somebody got, got my back. <laughs> Not going to happen. Not going to happen. I don't know about y'all, but not on, not on my watch. No, not going to happen. I don't know about everybody else. Some people have that springboard. Call on somebody, and then they're good to go. <laughs> not this kid, not me. So this is what I did. This was in the last two weeks, y'all. So I attended uh, some real estate meetups. I've attended at least two meetings per week. I met over 20 people in the last week. I've spoken to seven private money people. I went to two investor events. I've sent emails to five private money folks. I've sent emails to three different lenders that want to fund a deal. I'm going to talk about that deal here in a shortly. I worked out of Georgia, C, Virginia, soon to be D.C., all in the month of February, and I'm still on the road. I've had three different companies that want to fund the development that I'm working on. I'm waiting more offers on that. I had one person that said they'll give me $200 million for a 49% equity stake. Then another one said they'll fund it out. And I just had uh, two days ago another guy said, hey, I'm working with a hedge fund right now. We'll fund that uh, $200 million deal. The bottom line is we have to be proactive. We got to put ourselves out there. We got to go to these events. And I promise you, I don't want to go. I don't want to meet all these people, especially now, the dog on coronavirus out there. I don't want to shake hands with all these people. I don't want to do none of that. But I'm doing it because it's just that's what people that want success or on that road to success, that's what we do. We make excuses. And for me, excuses are monuments to nothing that build bridges to nowhere. And those fools who use those fools of incompetence are masters of nothing. 
Anybody can make it. It's so easy to quit, family. It's so easy to quit. I had emailed over four, nope, it's about 500 people today. I got another 446 people I got to email. But this is not like individual. I used to do individual. I used to be up to three in the dog on morning, two in the morning, individually sending out emails. And I'll do like 100, then 200. Then I'll be like, it's one o'clock in the morning. I say, well, that next person that I don't send the email to could be the right person. So then next thing you know, I end up sending another 100 more. And next thing you know, I'm going to bed at 2 in the morning. I'm going to bed at 3 in the morning. I'm like, man, then getting up, you know, probably about 6 and then starting over again, starting the day over again. That's, that used to be my schedule because I, I, I wanted that bad. And I'm still going. I'm still strong. I'm still standing. That was, that was back in 2011 I was doing all that. Now this is 2020, and I'm still, I'm still going. And I had a break in between there, though. I did. I was just comfortable. I said, forget it. I'm just going to be good. So what I'm about to tell y'all right now, <laughs> this is uh, what I'm, I'm, uh, I'm going to share with y'all, okay? This, what I'm about to tell you, is called legacy. This is called legacy. I've worked my behind off. I'm still working. I'm still going to work after this. But what I'm about to do in the next, Less than two weeks to secure my legacy, my daughter's legacy, her kids' legacy, kids' legacy. That's what's going down right now as I talk to y'all. So let me tell y'all, let me lay this out right here. I'm truly excited about this, and I'm blessed to even be in this situation, but I just kept networking and kept networking, and now a lot of the things that's happening right now is happening to me. I'm bringing people with me as I go on this journey. I'm going to be doing some crazy, crazy things, putting some stuff back in the community as well. So it's way bigger than me. And being that we have Elation Radio and then Elation Magazine and then whatever else we do with Elation, I'm definitely looking forward to the next event in November because November come around, Oh, my goodness. I don't know how big this is going to be by November, but I'm about to lay a few things on y'all right now, and then I'm going to multiply it, and you're going to see what I'm talking about because God is good. I'm going to tell y'all, God is good. We have to be obedient. We have to keep doing what we're doing, and he will increase your territory once you do your part, okay? He will increase your territory, but you have to do your part first. Family, do your part. I'm telling you, do your part. So this is what I have working on right now. This is why I've been traveling like crazy. This is why I've been talking to all these different private money folks. This is why I've been talking to all these lenders. This is why I'll be talking to these different people, going to these different events, and making moves. This is what we're doing. So up in Virginia Beach, Virginia, there's about 56 acres of land right now, a total of 100 acres, but we have access to 56 acres, the company I'm working with. I am an equity player in that company, just to let you know. I don't come to play games. So I'm an equity player in that company. And what we're doing, we're going to actually build a development out there. And on that development, we're going to have at least 100 multifamily luxury apartments. We have 60 garden apartments, 10 duplexes about two units each, you know, as far as the duplexes, those are duplexes. We're going to have some three-bedroom type of uh, structures as well. We're going to have about 90 townhomes. We're going to have 300 senior-assisted living apartment commercial retail space, and that's going to be for different store owners. So that's why I'm getting in touch with people that I know because we're going to have spacing to where – the commercial retail is going to be at the bottom. Y'all saw those, and people live at the top type stuff. We're going to do a clubhouse, a community center. It's going to be a museum. We're going to have a park, and it's going to be built around health and wellness. We're going to have a full-service boutique, high-rise hotel. We're going to have condos, and then we're going to have a limited-service type hotel. We have a multi-level parking garage to serve the commercial space in the hotel and the assisted living facilities. And we're going to have the veteran community in that same area as well. The total cost of this development for the project is approximately $170 million to $200 million. 
And as of as I'm talking to y'all right now, we got in touch with the appraiser. Now they're going to be going out there doing the appraisal to it. I'm actually still working on the funding, as I said. I have some people that came to the table, but I'm waiting until all my offers come in on the table. And people have really said, hey, I'll give you $200 million. And I say thank you and hold that thought right now because I need all the offers on the table so I can make an educated decision on which one we're going to go with. Simmer down, y'all. Y'all all right? Y'all all right? Okay. I'm going to go in a little bit more. I hope that's okay. <laughs> that's the start. And when I say legacy, what I mean by that is imagine you have access to the 56 acres or the 100 acres and you build all this stuff on there and you lease the land back to these different business owners and everything else for 99 years. Let that sink in for a second. Leasing it back for 99 years. So when I say my daughter, her kids, their kids, and even their kids is going to be taken care of from what I'm putting in place today and what I've been working on and how hard I've been working. Do you understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? <laughs> but let me let me explode this view for y'all for one second. So now this is what I'm most proud of, and literally I am not the person that did this. I'm, I'm, I understand really what I do. Uh, what I'm about to talk to you about is something that kind of blew me away, and I still don't have full grasp of it of 100. percent But I'm going to let you know because this is this is bigger than what I'm what I just told y'all. What I'm about to tell you right now is bigger than what I just told y'all. And if that's big, wait till y'all hear this. <laughs> and this is going to affect us all, okay? And when I say legacy, that's exactly what I'm talking about. So let me read, let me kind of give a, a scenario of what's actually happening right now. So I got tied into this guy, and he is an engineer, right? And since being an engineer, he does a little bit of IT. And so what he's been doing over the past couple of years, this is crazy to me. Everybody I tell, they look like they have a like puzzled look on their face when I tell them this. So I'm going to tell you all too. <sighs> crazy to me. So what he did, he actually solved for pi. 3.14. Y'all know that 3.14, that's, you know, number, 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 and it doesn't never end. Well, he actually solved for it. Like, there's an ending to it. I'm going to let that sink in for a second. Because I didn't know what he had told me, but he said he solved for pi. And I said, how is that possible? And then he broke down to me, you know, why it? Because a lot of people don't really want to go down that road to get the finite answer. And he spent his years doing that. So now he has the answer, and he said he can teach it to a fifth-year-old, fifth, fifth grader. So I was like, wow, pretty amazing. But I said, so so what does that mean? So this is just out of his mouth. This is not me. I don't – I'm not a math guy, you know, per se. I'm not a mathematician and do all that stuff. I run numbers, but not like, you know, that type of stuff. So what he told me was a lot of people are going to be <clears throat> interested a lot of companies are going to be interested. Like he said, he get to a point to where he can have an engine, a car engine running where it doesn't get hot just because he solved for pi. So you got companies like Tesla, like Microsoft, like Apple that can use that algorithm to improve upon what they're already doing. So these companies are going to be coming to talk to him about how he solved it. And I said, whoa. And so I can give out a little bit of this. So what happened is we have an entity that actually want to be a part of it, and they're giving $15 million for a movie because of it, right? This is crazy. So they're giving $15 million because of it for a movie. It's amazing to me. Now let me keep expounding on this, and this is this is – over my head, like I said. So 
I'm going to read some stuff and what this actually means. So for pi, it actually is broken down to STEM, science, technology, that type, you know, math, STEM. So with STEM, what his plan is is to be able to teach from kindergarten through college, STEM, because we need STEM anyway. No, no, everybody, in a sense, does. So I'm going to read uh, some of the things that's going to happen with it. So with STEM and PI, we call it the PI Institute. So it's the need to work seamlessly with every segment of our educational system to ensure that we achieve excellence in everything we do, and it's the need to develop cutting-edge programs at all of our instances of learning to ensure our international competitiveness. Now, the next one is the need to ensure that our compassion equal to and exceed every other aspect of our achievements, the need to reimagine education with the proper combination of brick-and-mortar institutions and artificial intelligence for the online and distance learning to substantially enhance the quality of management and staff. Now, this is where it breaks down to what STEM means in, in PI, in a sense. The need to play, place programs at minority-serving institutions to include a PI Institute. The programs will include research on the extensive use of hemp products, and when I say hemp, we're going to be using a little bit of the hemp products to build the structure, the wall. If you have hemp, hemp is a, it's going to be an insulator, so it really is going to cut down on the electric bill or the gas bill or the AC bill. So that's what hemp is going to be used for uh, when we're going down here. Uh, some of the other programs include in, uh, in hypersonic, looking at gene hacking, looking at the aviation technology uh, programs, looking at microbiology, microbial clouds, uh, charting with the human brain, digital library of human thinking, looking at capturing, storing, and translating the mind brain waves, uh, looking at uh, basically looking at the best and the brightest and bringing all these people to this information so we can really cover everything. And the biggest part of this right here is the need to improve minority-serving institutions of higher education to an unprecedented $50 billion scholarship initiative. I'm going to say that one more time, and that was with a B. The need to improve minority-serving institutions of higher education to an unprecedented $50 billion scholarship initiative. So what's actually taking place right now, as I'm talking to y'all, is a letter is being drafted up. We need to get federally accredited to be able to present this to every historically black college across the country, and that's where the $50 billion comes in at. And so let me get a little technical right here and kind of educate y'all on what's actually about to happen. So we don't need reparations. We don't need reparations. Allow us to use STEM, allow us to get this 50, I think it's maybe $60 billion, to pump that into the STEM so we can educate from kindergarten on up through college. That's what we're looking for. So we have a lawyer on the team that's actually working with this. We, it's it's going to be a political move as well, but the information is out there in big numbers. There's over 100 HBCUs in the country. So the other piece of the puzzle is this. So Morehouse, down in Atlanta area, they are actually going to be doing a satellite to Ghana in Africa. And so we're going to add that to what we're doing to where you get the 50 or $60 billion, and then we have these HBCUs that do satellites over to Africa for the education piece. This is huge, y'all. I don't even – this is just huge. I'm going to keep it like that. So let me go ahead and explode that a little bit more, okay? So I gave you all the one development we're working on right now that's, you know, 99-year payout. So let me run through the rest of the developments that I'm working on, and this is only seven of them. I'm not going to go over everything. I'm going to go over just seven, and y'all can see what I see when I say this is legacy. So I told you all about the one $200 million development. Now, the other one is going to be a mixed-use high-rise theme commercial and residential on 13 acres. It's going to have a theme destination development. That's a $450 million development. The next one is a mixed commercial use and high-rise residential on 25 acres. 
and this is a $350 million deal. The next one is mixed-use commercial and residential on a 12-acre development. That's an $80 million deal. The next one is a mixed-use commercial full-service hard rock casino hotel. That's a two-and-a-half-year construction, up to $150 million designed and to build that one. The next one is mixed-use commercial. It's a museum and residential development, and it's up to 20 acres of land, and that's $100 million right there. The next one is a mixed-use beach resort, PGA, that's the golf, Professional Golf Association, on two championship golf and a Ritz, which is full service, 300-room puff hotel and Pi Institute school facility. That's $200 million. The total of everything I just told you all is over $1.5 billion. That's seven mixed-use developments in different sites, and this is all in just the Virginia market. And that's, that's a piece of what I have. That's why I say legacy, family. This is way bigger than me. This is way bigger than me. And that's why I say legacy. So let me let me take y'all down this road where I'm going right now. So what's about to happen, I'm actually going to be meeting up with one of my mentors, right? And I'm going to tell you all the side story of one, what, what just happened back in, like, December time frame. So I, I probably told you all about a casino I was working on. Everything was going good, and that went under from one person. I'm going to tell you all what happened. And I may have told you all before, but just as a refresher. So this casino, they had $150 million. I was just happened to be telling my mentor about different things I'm working on. I told him about the casino, and I said they have $150 million. They're looking for another $150 million. And, you know, they're going to be doing that. And he was like, oh, Charles, I'll give them $150 million if that's all they need. I said, well, okay. I said, you sure? He said, yeah, send me the documentation. Send them the documentation. We all got on the phone saying, kumbaya, we were supposed to fly out there. Everything was set. As everything was set, the second guy that's in charge on their side, I was talking to the first guy, then there's the second guy, then the third guy was the broker, the fourth guy was the principal guy who actually owned the casino. So the second guy, my mentor, about three days after we got off the phone, he said, hey, Charles, can you give me the guy's phone number and email? The principal, the guy who owned the casino. I said, sure, Charles, I can't give it to you. I said, what? And then he said, such and such said, I can't give it to you. And I said, what? I said, hold on, get him on the phone. So we, all three of us got on the phone, me, the first guy, and the second guy. So we're talking, and I said, my man, what are you talking about? I can't have the guy's phone number. I said, we just got off the phone three days ago, and we're supposed to fly out there. I am already got my ticket, literally. So we're flying in the Beverly Hills. I already got my ticket. And he said, well, Charles, it's just business. And I said, my brother, I get it. But I said, let me explain to you how this works. I said, it's just business. But I said, do you know the broker? He said, yeah, man, we go over each other's house. I've known him for seven years. I said, do you think he'll go around you on the deal? He said, no, man, he wouldn't do that. I said, okay, well, do you know the owner of the casino? Yeah, man, I know him too. We go back, blah, blah, blah. I said, do you think he'll go around you on the deal? No, he won't do that because we, we go back. I said, okay, so my mentor doesn't have access to the land. He doesn't own the land. He doesn't own any parts of the casino. How can he go around you and take the casino? And he just said, well, it's just business. I said, okay, if it's just business, do this. How about you? We call it putting paper. It's like a non-disclosure agreement so nobody can go around you. I said, all you need is one person you to have a non-disclosure agreement on, and that's the person with the money and the person with the deal. So I said, how about you take a non-disclosure NDA and put it on your guy? And since you think somebody can go around you, he said, no, I need it on your guy. I said, no, you do not. All you need is it on one person. Because one without when that with that you can't go around anybody in a sense of the deal. But you know non disclosure are used for different things. But that's why you work with good people. So he wanted to be bigger than the deal. And the sad part is, I said, let me explain something to you. How about you put yourself in my mentor's shoes right quick? I said, if you were giving somebody 150 million dollars, do you think you'd want to talk to them? And if you couldn't talk to them, how would you feel? And so I left it at that. And so we keep going down the road. And I said, before I get off this phone, I want to, I want to be 100% clear of what you want me to do. You want me to tell my mentor that he can't speak to the person he's going to give $150 million to. Is that what you want me to tell? I said, okay, let me explain something to you before I get off this phone. It's not going to turn out the way you think it's going to turn out. It's not going to happen. Just to let you know. 
So I let it ride, and then I told my mentor, and he was like, what? He said, Charles, tell him if I don't get his phone number and email, then the deal is off. That's fine. And so we called the deal off. I called them guys. I said, man, I told you what was going to happen. So I called the deal off. And next thing you know, a week and a half later, they're going to call me back and be like, hey, you think he's still interested in doing the deal? <laughs> and my mentor, we got on the phone probably about uh, four weeks, three weeks ago or so. And he was like, Charles, whatever happened to those guys? I said, I haven't talked to them in a minute. He said, man, that guy is stupid. I said, yeah, he's pretty challenged. And my mentor was like, he just wanted to be in power. So literally what was going to happen with that particular deal, my mentor was going to put down $150 million, and then 30 days he was going to give another $150 million, another 30 days, another $150 million, until he got over a billion dollars. And after the casino that was going to be right in Vegas, I, I structured us, my guy, the, the number one guy, two guy, and three guy, and myself, I structured us a 5% equity deal in a casino in Vegas. You better believe it was about to be nice. And after that, there was going to be four other deals we were going to do. We were going to do high rises and everything. Everything that I told you all about that I'm working on right here in Virginia, we are going to do that out there in the California uh, Vegas region. But God is always good. And so after that fell through, they got in touch with me about all the high rises and everything over here, luxury apartments, and I said, perfect. And I told my mentor about it. He said, okay, bring the information up. We're going to meet up in D.C. and lay it out for me. And, uh, you know, we're going to sit down and my goal for my mentor, this is what I'm doing. When I sit down with him, I'm going to tell him I want him to stroke that check, $1.5 billion, because that's what he was going to do out there in the Vegas market. He's going to keep giving him $150 million. And he told me, to my, he said, Charles, $150 million, and I'm going to humbly say this, is not a lot of money. <laughs> so, okay, well, let's get it there. Let's do it. Let's go do some. That's why I say, you know, I want, I really want him to take on this deal, but I have about Oh, my gosh. So I probably have seven to ten people in different companies that want access to this deal. So, you know, I, I'm not going for single point failure. That's not what I do. I'm going to go take this deal down and make sure that it's done the right way. And uh, whoever, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to make sure that it's done because this is not a game. You don't, this is not uh, playtime, you know. So I hope, I hope, hope, hope y'all got something out of all of this. And I've been in this industry doing real estate for many, many moons. Never been associated with something this big. You know what? I can't say that. I do have that theme park down there that's going to be built out in the Houston, uh, Texas market. That's going to be the numbers change on that one to $4.7 billion with a B. So this is just – I'm in these deals now. I'm in these rooms. I'm talking to these people, talking to these hedge funds that have lots of money, and they want to, you know, help people. I'm talking to philanthropists. I'm talking to – the crazy thing is this. So the guy with the Pi Institute, they say they need to get with Jeff Bezos. They got to get with, uh, that's the Amazon guy. And then they got to get with the Tesla guy. They got to get with Bill Gates and all that, right? So I'm sitting in class, in this class in Virginia, and this, and he he actually didn't buy in to Starbucks when it started up because the guy was pitching him, and they know each other. And he was pitching him. He said, man, nobody going to buy a $5 cup of coffee. And he said, man, that was one of my dumbest mistakes I ever made. And, you know, Starbucks is what it is today. But he did get with Jeff Bezos. So him and Jeff Bezos know each other. Like, and he, he already bought in to them. So he made a lot of money with Amazon. But he said, hey, I'm going to bring Jeff Bezos in to talk to you all. And you don't understand. The, my light went off like, oh, my gosh. Jeff Bezos come in the room with me. I'm going to give him the business. He's getting it. He's getting the industry. I don't care. I'm not scared. I don't care. So he's going to get, but I'm going to do it as a philanthropist. I'm going to do it as, you know, we're helping people because we're helping a lot of people with this right here. It's going to help every HBCU. It's going to help as far as STEM. This is an educational piece. We're going to the Department of Education with this. This is bigger than me, truly bigger than me. So I'm just excited to be, be with it, be around it. I'm excited to be able to help people, be able to educate people, and just give everything that I have to make this a reality. And that's my piece, time. <laughs> my name is Charles McCutcheon, and I'm your favorite entrepreneur, and I'm hungry, and nobody, and I mean no person, is going to stop me, period. So I'm going to pray this out. But before I do that, Miss Kimmy, I say thank you for even giving me the platform 
to be a part of Elation Radio and Elation Magazine and then Elation Honors Weekend in November where we are, the city is on board, and whenever you get the city on board, it's just a beautiful thing. It's just a beautiful thing. So, dear Heavenly Father, I pray to you right now to bless everyone as we're going through the hard times. I pray for everybody's strength. I pray for everybody's unity. I pray for empowerment. Dear Father, let them know that everything happens in your time, and I know you'll provide the strength that we need to move forward when the time comes. It will be right on time. Father God, you're all-knowing, and we must believe and trust in you. We get weak, but we must continue to keep the faith in trying times. We must ensure that we manifest the destiny and the glory that you've already set forth in our lives, Father God. Ensure that we use up the territory you've given us, dear Lord, for everyone to gain more strength. I pray for everyone to gain more wisdom and know that we'll know without a doubt that joy comes in the morning. In your name, I pray. Amen, amen, and amen. And I'm out, y'all. Y'all take it easy because I'm I'm hungry. I'm going to go get it. <laughs> Shout out D on the track. Paint Music Media. Shout out DJ Lee Productions. And I'm Al Ken. But if you a game changer, get my yeah, head yeah. To the past, ain't nothing left to give it that reverence that the father gets. So every day I work the sweat, can get a flesh and other rest. They say go hard or go home. I say just do whatever's best. It's evident I'm blessed and I work like it. Fight, fight like a Viking. Fight, fight like a lichen. The difference is I like it, so I shine like I'm lightning. So I'm going head to head with certain death. Who you liking? <laughs> yeah. So it's time for coach to put me in. I'm strapping on my shoulder pads, lacing up my cleats, and then I'm gone with the wind. Like I'm gone in 60 seconds. You can't hold me. You can't check me. Check the memo. Check the message running through. Like, like, like I'm bad as I'm trucking. Whoever's standing in my way. Ain't, ain't no way you gon' stop me. You better off to let me in. Cause I go hard even though they say no way that I could win. Like I'm Brett Ford. I'ma ride this way. My head is in the sky. My grind don't I'm a game changer. I'm a game changer. I'm a game changer. I'm a 
game changer. I'm a game changer. I'm a game changer. I'm a game changer. I'm a game changer. I'm a game changer. I'm a game changer. I'm a game changer. I'm a game changer. I'm a game changer. I'm a game changer. I'm a game changer. I'm a game changer.